Five years ago, when the previous government, the coalition, dropped plans for a, a new runway at Heathrow, and indeed runways elsewhere, uh, I, I wrote this little publication which described the campaign that led up to that. It's called Victory Against All the Odds. But it set me thinking, as I was preparing for today, what would I call another publication if I was to write it over the last five years? I suspect it would be something like the five-year itch or the five-year wait, uh, or now it is the five-and-a-bit-year wait. Because although the Davis Report has been published, the final chapter in many ways has still to be written. And the final chapter will be the political chapter. And it may yet have a sting in the tail, depending which politicians are writing it. If it's the, cab the members of the cabinet who are reportedly against the third runway at Heathrow, people like Theresa May, Philip Hammond, Theresa Villiers, Justin Greening, Greg Hands, Boris Johnson and the aspiring Mayor of London, Zach Goldsmith, it'll be a very different chapter and have a very different ending to the one that we've got now. So I think my first thought today is Heathrow, Heathrow third runway for now. But let me turn to the third runway. <laughs> and let me turn to the, the statement Howard Davis made, where he said that a third runway, you know, in fact, he said, a bigger Heathrow could be better for residents. At first, that may seem a little odd. And I just want, in my contribution today, to try and assess that. It is clear that for some residents, a bigger Heathrow will not be better. For people who don't want to take the compensation and offer and whose homes have been knocked down, it's clearly not better. And we'll probably hear some words from Neil Keverin later. For people who would be under the new flight path, it can hardly be claimed to be better. Uh, for people who are opposed to a third runway per se, they would argue it's not better. There are, of course, and uh, Rob Gray will helpfully uh, remind us, a good proportion of people in West London who do support a third runway. And bigger would be better for them. Uh, and over the past uh, five years, I think what Back Heathrow has done is given a voice to those people. I think the polls show that the proportion of people opposing and supporting a third runway hasn't changed significantly over the last 10 years or so. In West London, those supporting hovers around perhaps just under 50%. Those opposed to a third runway, around about 30 to 33%. So things haven't changed too much, but as I say back, Heathrow has given a voice to those who do support a third runway. And although it's been irritating for us at times, Rob, I think that has enhanced the debate. But I suspect there are some residents who look at the Davis menu of conditions and might be quite attracted by some of them. Some people will look at the condition of no night flights before six o'clock in the morning. Now, for many residents, night flights is the biggest problem. And for 20 years, I don't think there's been progress much one way or the other on night flights. It's been stalemate. So on this menu, there's a tempting course for them. Others may glance at the menu that Davis has, in front of, has put in front of us of conditions and say a fourth runway, a legally binding agreement, if achievable, might well be attractive. 
might well bring the sort of reassurance that people in West London and beyond haven't had for many years. And then there is the, the critical one, which is, I, I, I think was said earlier on, hasn't been fully worked out. But this idea of a legally binding noise envelope, where uh, Davis is suggesting that uh, local authorities, local communities, work with uh, the local airport and also with uh, other sectors of aviation industry like air traffic control and CAA, to look and see how the noise climate around Heathrow can be improved. And John Holland Kay was right to say that in some ways that's a, a continuation of what's been happening over the last two or three years. We in Haycan have been working quite constructively with Heathrow and others to look at how the noise climate can be improved at a two-runway airport. And in particular, we've been looking at what I regard as a key concept, and which I'm happy to say I think is now a mainstream concept of an element of respite for all people under the flight paths. Some people in West London already get uh, relief from the noise when runway alternation kicks in. But they're actually a minority of the people living under the flight paths to Heathrow. Almost certainly the biggest single topic in the Haycan mailbox over the last five years and more has been from people living in local communities some distance from Heathrow who get no uh, predictable relief from the noise. Areas like Kennington, the Oval, Clapham. Over 40 planes an hour sometimes, virtually throughout the day. And what most people there, they're not saying, shut down Heathrow, though some may be. What they are saying is, can we have some relief? And I'm glad to say that the Davis Report has endorsed wholeheartedly the concept of relief from the noise, the concept of respite. So in this menu that Davis has offered, there are some people who will say, no, there's nothing in it for me. If I'm perfectly honest, there are others who will say, there may be something in it for me. It may be worth looking at. There's a long way to go before the details are worked out, and the devil, in some cases, will be in the detail. I, I saw a tweet earlier on which said that this, whatever the residents' reaction to this menu of conditions, Davis wasn't saying to the airport, this is a take it or leave it. He wasn't saying to the government, these conditions are take it or leave it. Yes, he was saying they could be modified and they need to be discussed. But he was very clearly saying that a third runway cannot happen unless broadly these conditions are in place. I just want to end on one final thought, which is connected. Davis, the, 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 I said earlier on, we don't know how the final chapter is going to pan out, whether it will go for Heathrow, Gatwick, or some other option. But I think that something that's come across very clearly from Davis is he has moved the debate on, on noise. Understandably, the, the headline grabbing uh, parts of the report were about, is it Heathrow? Is it Gatwick? But actually, we tend to forget that Davis was given a clear remit to investigate noise policy. And one of the reasons why Haycan engaged constructively with the Airports Commission was to try and influence that debate on noise policy. And I think Davis has, I would go as far as to say, significantly moved that debate on. 
He's opened up, firstly, he's opened up the whole question on night flights. Secondly, he is talking very clearly and endorsing the principle of respite. And critically, not just for Heathrow. This is the relevance of the noise policy. He's talking about respite at other airports as well. In our view, too, importantly, he has moved the debate on, on the technical but important subject of noise metrics. He has said that it's no longer um, sufficient to rely on the 57 LEQ contour to measure noise. That is music to Haykan's ear, ears. We like the idea of a suite of metrics that can uh, be clearer about the noise problem and can explain it more uh, effectively to local communities. And finally, as has been mentioned earlier, Davis has been very clear of the importance of an independent noise regulator. And I was glad to hear from Andrew Haynes from the CAA that they've accepted the idea in principle. Our belief is that an independent noise regulator would be a huge step forward. Ironically, perhaps less important at a big airport like Heathrow, where we already have a good working relationship with the airport, but more importantly at some of the smaller airports around the country, where if truth be known, the, um, the attitude of some of the airports to the local community leaves much to be desired. An independent noise regulator could change that. So, in conclusion, whatever the final chapter says about the runways, I think the noise aspect of this report is a legacy that Davis and the Commission can be proud of. Thanks very much. <laughs>